better run, man Life's a pain, but you got me Yeah, life's a pain, but I got you but these characters, they're living outside the pages too. And, and we still get Scarlet Spider stuff. Like today, Funko Pop just dropped um, a new exclusive Funko on their website. So I'll put a picture up on screen there, but also I'll try to put a link to their website down below. If you guys are Scarlet Spider fans, there's a new Funko Pop coming out. And I was telling Randy about this right before the show started. This thing is cool. It's like, it's the colors are really good on it. I love the red and blue. The blue looks really awesome the way it pops, but the hood is actually up over his head, which is really cool looking. It's not an image you see a lot. So I'm excited for that. Um, and then also there's this new trading card series called Marvel Annual uh, 2023 to 2024. And this is covering a whole year worth of Marvel comics and some of the big events in it. And there's going to be cards in there for the Dark Web series. So you're going to get a Hollow's Eve card. You're going to get a Chasm card. Um, you're going to get some of these characters, some who've had trading cards before and some who haven't are making their trading card debut. And then also there's a summer of symbiotes subset in this where you're going to get flexo and uh, sleeper and some of these other characters that also haven't had trading cards before. So I don't know. Do you, do you, um, as a collector of these characters and stuff, do you ever go online and look on eBay and try to find like a, a, a Ben Riley or a Kane trading card from the nineties and, and pick it up to have um, your collection? I I actually uh, have every Venom, Ben Riley, Kane, Toxin, Spider Carnage trading card from uh, 1989 all the way up to uh, 1997. Whoa, okay. Yeah. Pretty so. cool. That That's a nice collection there. So I've actually got like all of their rookie cards. Um, okay. So I'm definitely interested in getting Chasm and Hallow's Eve for sure. Uh, I wouldn't mind having Flexo and Sleeper as well. Yeah, there's uh the cards look really cool. Like um the uh, Marvel so Upper Deck. If if for those who don't know, like they they recently announced that they are no longer making Marvel cards after December 31st of this year. So they, the license has been purchased out from them and now tops is going to be making Marvel cards starting January 1st of next year onward. Um, and actually their first set already came out tops Chrome Marvel. It was only released in the UK right now, but it'll be coming to the States as soon as it can. Um, so annual here, this is the last annual series uh, that that upper deck's going to make. But it's cool that they're squeezing in all these characters, like I said, who some of them who have not had cards before. And to capture these events that we've talked about on the show, we've talked about Dark Web, we've, you know, together, we've talked about the Summer of Symbiotes, both of them. Um, so it'll be cool to see a lot of that stuff kind of re, you know, imagined as trading cards uh, with little blurbs on the back and their power stats, you know, and how they used to do in the 90s with their, you know, how smart they are and how quick they are and all that um, and their yeah. strength levels. So I'm, I'm looking forward to it. So we will have a box of that Marvel annual coming in probably a week from today uh, as we're recording this. I'll try to get this video posted by the weekend. So hopefully when you see this a couple days after, you'll see our unboxing of Marvel annual. And I haven't decided yet if I'm going to do it on the Seek It Nice show or the Venom vlog because there's a, a possibility I could open an entire box and not get any of the, those cards that we just mentioned. <laughs> so, so, uh, so that would make a very boring Venom vlog episode if, if that's the case. So, um, so we'll see, maybe I'll record two intros for it and then just see how the box goes. But, um, I'm excited for those. I'm excited to talk about those characters again. And, uh, and I'm also excited to have you back and, and I'm glad we got to do this, man. This was really cool. Steve Fox, Andrea, uh, Brocardo, I believe is the artist. Um, Brian Reber, Joe Caramagna, um, Nick Lowe, all the people that worked on this, like, this is a fun book. I have criticism, sure, but I think you and I were I'm in agreement with you, man. Like I'm I'm glad it exists. Like I, yes. I feel I feel like overwhelmed that this book is a reality. It's like if they made a Slingers miniseries right now. I, I don't know why I wouldn't be the one they asked to write it, but if they made the Slingers miniseries, that that would blow me away too. Like I would be like, what did I do to deserve this? <laughs> um yeah, yeah, I actually, uh, I actually have that series. Um, I actually, uh, I went through those uh, not long ago. Um, I, uh, I was going through my comics and I seen those. And I was like, "Wow, that's a blast from the past," you know. Oh, with Slingers. Uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's I. I, I oh, go ahead. I've, I've even got the uh, the Wizard special of, of Slingers. Yeah, the Zero yeah. issue. Yeah, yeah. Okay. 
Yeah. We, um, we, us as well. We also have the, the eight issues of identity crisis that introduce those costumes. Um, and the, uh, and Peter Parker, Spider-Man, the dust costume was actually introduced like 10 issues earlier on somebody else wore it in the, in the negative zone. Um, but, uh, but then it was passed on to Spider-Man. So it was cool to kind of see all that and, and, and follow that journey. I mean, I, I even have, um, a screenplay when we worked at Sony and we were writing the Spider-Man four screenplay that we were trying to pitch with the lizard and Craven back when Tobey Maguire and, and Sam Raimi were, you know, just finished Spider-Man three. Uh, I also had written solo a slingers screenplay uh, because I was really hoping to, to do a slingers movie, <laughs> like a made for TV movie. Um, and, uh, and yeah, it never, obviously never happened. I never got to pitch it, but, um, but I love those characters. So, uh, and I like that, you and I are a lot of times on the same wavelength when it comes to these underdogs. And I feel like Ben and Kane are, they remind me of, I don't know how familiar you are with DC with some of their characters, but Roy Harper. Um, oh yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, yeah. Like I love Roy Harper as, as speedy as arsenal as Roy Harper. He's one of those characters that, that I was convinced um, you can do almost anything with. And DC has, I mean, they've done, they put that guy through the ringer. And not every story do I love. Like like when they took his his they killed his daughter. Like they put that guy through some hard stuff. And I I now see that Ben and Kane have kind of become that for the yeah. Spider Man universe. And and I guess in a way, I'm interested to see what stories they'll tell because now they'll tell they'll tell stories that you can't do with Spider Man. You right. know, and and that is a good reason to keep these guys around. So so I can't wait to see where issues three and four go. And I can't wait to have you back on and and for us to conclude this and conclude our six years of talking about these characters. It's, it's, uh, it's been a wild ride, man. I'm grateful to have you on it. Oh yeah. It's always, always fun. Always fun. <laughs> awesome. Any last things you'd like to say before we wrap up? Um, you were saying that, uh, you might want to talk a little bit about, uh, uh, the last dance just a little bit. Absolutely. If you'd like to, I mean, yeah, we, I have, um, I have some information, that I'll, I'll drop here in a second, but yeah, please. I mean, what are your thoughts? Like trailer reaction, all that's like, wh what are you excited about? Marketing is out of control right now for that movie. Right now. I'm excited to be having the movie. Just having the movie is exciting yeah. enough. A uh, third Venom solo movie. Did you ever think we would be here like six years ago? Like I didn't, I, I hoped, but I didn't think. I remember way back in the day, logging on to superherohype.com uh -huh. and then saying there's a Venom movie in the works year after year. Venom <laughs> yeah. movie in the works. Yeah. You know? And finally Venom shows up in Spider-Man 3 yep. and they kill Venom off. And yes. everybody's like in a rage. Everybody just... <laughs> right. you know? But they're like, there's going to be a Venom movie for years and years and years. And then what did they say? They said... Uh, it was like, it was always a prank first. It was like, Justin Bieber's going to be Eddie Brock. And then, <laughs> and then it was, uh, Zach Efron's going to be Eddie Brock. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, uh, and then finally they were like, Tom Hardy's going to be Eddie Brock. And everybody's like, you know, this is a joke too, right? And they're like, no, it's <laughs> real. Right. No, this one's <laughs> real. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I remember uh, I was living, I was living in LA when they announced that and they said Tom Hardy and they were like, Oh, and I was like, Nah, I don't. There's no way he's gonna sign on to do Venom, and it turns out he did. I guess turn it down originally, but it, if, uh, at least the story goes that his son was like, "Dad, you gotta play Venom. He's the coolest character ever." And so he relooked at it, and then I think Kelly did some rewrites, and then they they were off to the races. Um, and uh, but then when they dropped that video of him training, I remember I was at a low point in my life. I was just recovering, uh, not too long prior to that uh, from a a uh, self deletion attempt. And I remember, you know, seeing that him training and I thought, well, I've been told that exercise will be a good thing for my mind. So in the beginning of the Venom vlog, it was eating a little bit better. It was exercising a little bit more. And I watched that video of him training and I was like, this could be a fun topic to talk about because I remember Venom also had gone through some dark depression in the comics and I felt like a kinship with the character. And I was like, but then I realized, well, I don't really know a lot about Venom. I know like surface level stuff and a couple of key moments, but I don't know a ton. And so this could be a way for me to dive into the character. And I thought, all right, we're just going to do this one movie. I don't know if it'll do well. Tom's great, but who knows if it'll you know perform. 
And I remember when that movie made like $850 million or something, I remember thinking, dude, I might be doing this show for a couple of years. Um, and, uh, and here we are now, like six years later. So um, I'm glad I'm like you, man. I'm like this book that we talked about today and this movie, I'm glad it exists. Like I, I'm, I, I'm, I'm grateful that they got to tell a, a story focused on Venom without the, the strings of tying him to Spider-Man, but yet still, you know, you never know, I guess we haven't seen this movie where, where they could take it, but I still feel like they, they pulled off something I didn't think they could pull off. And, uh, and, and here we are now with a freaking no appearance. Like I'm, I'm just blown away. Like I, I, I can't believe we're here. For that. Um, so I am extremely excited for Noel. Extremely excited. Um, I don't know if I have told you about mm -hmm. this. Maybe I have. I, I'm not. I'm not sure. But I have a. Um, I feel very close to Noel. Not okay. in a bad way. Not in okay. a bad way. <laughs> um, I know I've told you part of the story. Mm -hmm. um, there was a certain comic book that I had been looking for for a long time and I wasn't able to find it. Okay. And I told you about me being friends uh, with Ed Lewis, editor. Ed uh, Lewis. Oh, Dev Devin? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, well, Ed. Oh, yeah, yeah, Ed, right. I got you. Yeah. Uh, so uh, he was like, you know what? I'm going to send you a care package. Yeah. So he sends me a care package, right? Mm -hmm. He sends like a big stack of exclusive Venom comic books. Cool. Okay? Yeah. And the one co comic book I'm looking for, which was a 1 in 25 ratio, he sends me three of them. Dude. So, Epic. Yes. Yeah. And that was uh, Venomized number 5, the 1 in 25, with Venom on the cover, doing the Spider-Man number 1 pose that Tom yeah. Farley did. Right. Okay. So, I'm... Um, talking with him a lot he's like mm -hmm. hey why don't you uh write up something for uh the new venom series with donny cakes and ryan stegman i'm like okay so i do that he takes it and he puts it in venom number three the first appearance of Noel. no way yes dude that's so epic I, so i will forever be in that book with Noel. that's amazing dude that's awesome <laughs> That's a key so, yeah. issue, and I, I think that's an issue they're about to, or already did, reprint, right? Yeah. Like, they're going to do, like, a facsimile version of it um, yeah. for the release of the film, and that's a smart move, honestly. Because, um, yeah, that was a key book that, that introduced him. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to this movie, and I'm, I'm looking forward to, you know, I think uh, Ryan Stegman had watched it recently, according to his Twitter account, and he's very excited about like the the possibilities of where this is going to go universe building wise um so it sounds like big things are coming i don't want to get into spoilers but i will say the marketing of the movie has been like out it's just been crazy like they're they're clearly going back to the first movie where the movie the first movie had a lot of fun and unique marketing they had those like those chinese like posters of like venom helping college girls walk to class, you know, <laughs> like, like they, they had all these like really weird and unique marketings, but they, they it, it ended up working, I guess, because the movie did so phenomenal. So this one, they like recently appeared at like a luchador wrestling match in Mexico. And they did a big you know thing there. They're going to New York comic con coming up. They have the premiere in New York and a couple days after that. So like, to me, like I, I can't keep up. People are like, Hey man, are you going to cover this? Are you going to like, like agony, and she venom are going to join Fortnite, you know? Um, so I know blue, I told blue, Hey, buy me those skins. And I need some footage of that for our show. And he said, no problem. Cause he plays Fortnite all the time. Um, and then I'm like, all right. And I also need like, uh, they're going to add a venom car to rocket league. I need you to get that for me. And I need you to, um, if they re-release the venom costume in Fortnite, I need that. And then also Marvel snap added agony and scream and some symbiotes. And they're doing a big symbiote Halloween event. And then Marvel Strike Force added Scream. Uh, Marvel Future Fight has like a symbiote thing. Like, there's so much going on. It, it's impossible for me to keep up with because before, when I was in California, keeping up with all marketing for the first movie, I worked a job that I had set amount of hours and I could I could schedule things. But now it's like 
we work three jobs. I switch personalities like nothing. I just don't have the time. So I have one big video coming out soon for those of you asking about me uh, where I talk about the marketing for this Venom movie. So we will dive into it for sure. So yeah, I did want to say that earlier. So thanks for reminding me on that. Um, but I'm glad to get your thoughts. I mean, I'm, I'm so, I can't wait. Uh, you know, one thing I might try to do is after the movie comes out, maybe have you on you know, uh, and we can discuss like our thoughts on the movie and I'll see if yeah. we, can get, we can get Eddie's mullet and a couple other people. So anyone who's watching this, if you want to hit me up on Twitter and we can try to squeeze you in, we'll do like a pre-recorded thing like this and I'll just edit it, you know, to, uh, to, and try to get more people and we can have like a spoiler discussion. So anyone out there, you know, open invitation. I, I probably won't pick everyone, but I'll do my best to get some of you in for sure. Uh, but definitely want to have you back on for that. Cause that would be fun to just talk about this trilogy of movies with you. Um, I actually talked to Eddie's mullet uh, a couple days ago. Awesome. Uh, he's doing good. He's just good. been really busy. I get um, it. He said that uh, he was going to check out this latest uh, Venom blog. Okay. Um, you know, up, hopefully, man? hopefully we can get him on at some point. That'd be great. Um, but um, I was going to say this mm -hmm. uh, for anyone that hasn't seen it yet. I'm not. Te I'm not asking you to cover it or anything. I'm just asking you to watch it, okay? Because it's okay. absolutely, absolutely hilarious. Okay. There is. Uh, it's either it's like a commercial or or an ad or something for Hot Ones. Okay. Oh, I know. <laughs> it's Venom, right? Yeah. And they have they have venom eating the hot wings. <laughs> yeah. It is absolutely hilarious. <laughs> so so for those who don't know, like um uh on Twitter, I want to say it was like a month ago, probably like early September or maybe late August, actually. I think it might have been late August. Um Hot Ones tweet. So Hot Ones is a show I personally have been watching for over 10 years. I think it was at post aneurysm. It was one of the first shows on YouTube that I I actually wrote the, the the comment sections were so few comments that I would get direct responses sometimes. And I wrote, I said, man, I would love to get famous enough to be on your show one day. And he said, I hope so, man. <laughs> Cause he's like, I don't know who you, he's like, I don't know who you are, but that, that would be awesome. Like, I, I love, I love that you love the show so much that you want to be on here and talk with me and, and, and eat chicken wings. And that was back when the, the show, it had a good following, but it was like, it was very small. Um, and yeah. he was, he was talking to like rappers and musicians and things like that. And occasionally like a comedian or something. I was so happy over the years seeing that guy climb to the level he's climbed at. So I follow the hot ones account. So when they tweeted, which fictional character would you like to see on hot ones? I had actually <laughs> responded venom, duh. <laughs> and uh and sure i quote tweeted it and sure as anything i want to say like a month almost to the day from that tweet my response um they announced that venom was going to be on hot one so i was like yeah that's awesome like because to me he's so perfect of a goofy character to hey, have on a show like oh, that. God, that 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 tickled me man i watched that over and <laughs> <laughs> it's so good like and that's what I, that's some of the stuff i'm going to talk about in the video is like how they've done soccer ads like in italy for venom they've done uh the the hot ones thing they've got these the, the contest the poster contest for fans came back and i actually entered it this time which I, I really was bummed that i let it get away from me the first two times and but uh and i saw the winners the winners those posters are amazing i know one people someone sent me like oh they might have swiped this image from a statue or something and i'm like yeah but it's still like it's cool it's an iconic looking shot of venom or whatever but still the artwork is really great and there's no ai was used it seems in any of the artwork which is good um so i i i knew i was up against stiff competition with my street art version but um but seeing the ones that came out and apparently sony is going to contact us or the company that ran the contest they're going to contact us and let us know when we can share our posters, the people who entered. So at some point you'll see mine and you'll see it. It doesn't even come close to the ones who won. Um, but it was still, I was proud of myself for actually applying this time, you know, and I stayed up all night working on it. Um, uh, and it, it made purple's day the next day at work suck big time. <laughs> cause, cause, uh, cause we were already going on, I think three days of no sleep and I made it four days of no sleep. And, and, and that, um, that's when sleep deprivation starts setting in for us, you know, like it already has it by day two really. But, um, 
but day four, it's bad. Um, and we look sick. Like we look like we're suffering. So I, I, I didn't mean to put them through that, but I really wanted to commit to being in the contest this time. So yeah, we're going to talk about all that in that episode. Um, but yeah, I'd love, hopefully Eddie's doing well. I'm glad you told me that update and uh, I need to get on Twitter more. I will sometimes post something and then leave Twitter blue will sometimes manage my Twitter and he basically anything that's venom or moon Knight or Marvel video games or movies. I just ask him, Hey, retweet it just so later when I check it's uh, X, uh, you know, X or Twitter, I can see what the news that came out, <laughs> you know? So uh, sometimes you might get a response in there and it's not from me. Uh, so just a heads up for people who follow me on Twitter, but with you, I, you know, I know I had some issues with my messaging on there, um, but I'm, thank you for toughing that out with me and communicating with me in other means and, um, and working this out to where you could be here tonight. So um, yeah, last thoughts, man. Cause uh, yeah, I know we've been going for an hour and the last 20 minutes really hasn't been about this mini series, but it's just so great to catch up with you. So I, I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, I, I always look forward to doing this. It's always, always fun. 